Welcome back to Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. The clouds are coming in, but I'm glad to say we've had no rain so far. Uh, it was anticipated, but it hasn't actually shown up. As we look ahead now to our next race on the calendar, and that is Formula 4 for the USA. And this is where most of the young superstars of up-and-coming American racing start their quest to become an IndyCar driver, an FIA Formula 1 driver, or just basically a professional racing driver. It all starts here after maybe doing a little bit of karting, a little bit of sim racing, and then you finally get the chance to do the real thing in F4. Now, we are getting ready for their third race of the weekend. We've had some good racing so far from them. Uh, ben Sissel is standing by, and he is going to take us through what we're about to see as we get ready for our competitors in F4. Down to you, Ben. Hey, welcome to the grid here at F4 U.S. Championships. We're here with points leader and last race winner, Lockie Hughes, all the way from the Gold Coast of Australia, here racing with us at Mid-Ohio. But first, I want to explain what F4 is. If you have a son or a daughter that's currently in racing, mostly carts, F4 is designed perfectly for driver development. And I, I know this firsthand because I've been to Scott Goodyear and Jeff Luckritz, their driver's meeting, everything that he does. Scott Goodyear, if you know anything about Scott Goodyear, ex-Indy car racer, uh, Indy car announcer, he's very detail-oriented, and everything is to develop these drivers into what they call the ladder system. Then it goes from F4 into FR Americas, which is the F3 base chassis, both Liget chassis, but this is the F4. You're going to see a little bit of ground effects, a little bit of uh, ground force and wings on the front, no brake ducting. It's a little bit smaller tires, but it is the Honda K20 engine, the same engine that was in my Civic Type R, non-turboed in these F4 cars, and a little smaller wing back here with some ground effects. But we're going to talk to Lockie Hughes, because Lockie, coming here, racing all the way from the Gold Coast of Australia, what does the F4 series mean to you as far as driver development goes? Oh, I think it's a great series. Um, Obviously, it's a great first uh, stepping stone, and uh, you know I'm loving every minute of it. Nice, and doing a very good job, I might add. He won at NOLA with us in the first round. He won today in the earlier race, did really well at Road America. But we'll walk up. We have 22 cars in this, and the great thing about F4, they can race really close. The aero packages in this don't give the kind of wash that most ground effect cars and wings and slick cars give. So you're going to see really close racing. Jason Alder's in the booth. He did really well with us in F4 last year. He's going to be able to explain how you can draft on these long straights here at Mid-Ohio. Bryson Morris won the first race here with us all the way from Nashville, Tennessee area. A really good driver. He had his first race win with us last year in Brainerd, Minnesota. And so I'm going to give it to Jonathan to introduce Jason Alder. And then Jason Alder, you're going to be our resident official on the F4 platform because you did so well with us last year. So, gentlemen, I'm going to you. You know, I, I've got a feeling he's not going to be scared of that mantle because, yes, he does know a little thing about Formula 4. He knows about half, if not most, of the paddock in Formula 4 currently. And he, of course, will be racing later this afternoon in the FR Americas. And that's the progression. Jason, what did F4 mean to you when you, when you took it on? Oh my goodness, F4 was incredible for my development as a road course driver. It's essentially the best stepping stone that you can really be a part of, especially early on in that career, being the first you know, kind of step outside of go-karts. So a lot of these drivers were in their first year of F4, some of them are in their second year, but there was a whole lot of talent across the board. Well, let me ask you this. I'm sure there's a lot of people tuning in, maybe some dads and some kids, wondering well what what you know what what kind of qualifications do you need to be able to drive one of these things and what could help you get to a point uh, where you could do it well to be honest there's not that much requirements for being an f4 driver however it is very beneficial to have a lot of karting experience as a background it is a good foundation that you can use to go from that carts to cars you know kind of career especially those two strokes things like that because these cars do have a good bit of torque and it's very important to get that power down out of those corners and I guess working on a sim and learning the tracks, that's another key. And you can do that without a lot of money and a lot of testing time. It's an expensive sport, as we all know. Uh, but now there are cheaper ways of learning the way to, to racecraft. Have you done sim racing? 
I have. I have. A lot of sim racing. Getting good? If, uh, I, I, I'd like to be better. It's very difficult, honestly. There's a lot of things that you can learn in the sim for real life, and there's also a lot of things that you learn in real life that you can use in the sim. It's kind of a, a balance of both. They help sharpen each other. So tell me about your season so far in FR. You've got another race today, uh, but let's go back to NOLA and Road America and now here at Mid-Ohio. How's it going? I, I feel like we've made steady progress throughout the whole course of the season, kind of itching our way towards, towards the front of the pack, typically Raul, who has been pretty much fairly dominant all season long. Uh, I know at NOLA we started off around a second to a second and a half back, but we've just been cracking away at that, and I think this weekend we've been closer than ever, with the exception of that last race. But I am super confident for race three. I think that we're going to have a, a good race car for, for uh, the event, and I think we can do, do some damage from, from fourth place on the grid. Now, we've met before. I know your parents. I've known you pretty, pretty long now. And what is your ambition? Tell the folks what you hope to gain out of this sport. I would love to be an IndyCar driver, an F1 driver, a NASCAR driver, even pretty much anything at that top level. I would love to make it make it to the end. It's been a dream of mine since I was a young boy, maybe when I was four years old or something like that. I was going to say, what's my next question? What, got, what gave you the bug? What, how did you get into it? Oh, man. Uh, my dad, actually. So I, I, just to give a little bit of background, I do not come from a family in racing whatsoever. Uh, my dad was a little bit of a NASCAR fan, but just casual at that, so we really didn't do much. But uh, we ended up finding a go-kart in a yard sale uh, many, <laughs> many years ago, and we ended up buying it and fixing it up together. And uh, I, we took it to the elementary school parking lot, and at first I was scared of the death of the thing. But I soon fell in love with it and popped the question on my dad, Dad, I want to race cars one day. That's awesome, and I bet, he, I bet you had that sinking feeling of how the heck am I going to afford that? Oh, my goodness. We had no idea what we were getting into. Well, I'm going to talk to you some more about your career and some of the sponsors. You've got some unique sponsors that you're involved in, including some, uh, is it diabetes that you uh, have a foundation with? Or Cor with? Yes, my eldest sister, Jessica, has type 1 diabetes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm glad you've got that as part of what you're doing as well to help her and awareness of, of that uh, situation. There's our drone base right by our commentary booth, doing a heck of a job from high above. They have trouble landing the damn thing, though. They're doing point prizes to try and land it in these winds, but they're doing all right. Anyway, Formula 4, United States Championship. It's round nine of the series and in pole position. It is the championship leader from the Gold Coast. You just heard from him there, and that is Lockie Hughes. Do you know him? I have not had the pleasure of meeting Lockie. He is one of those few drivers out there that I have not made uh, the pleasure of meeting yet. But he has done an incredible job all season long as a rookie. It's his first year, and here he is leading the championship and coming off a fresh race Now, win. what happens here for the 53? Because he's way out of his pit box. And how did he get there, I wonder? That is not good. I don't know. But I guess as long as he's behind the line, I don't know if race control would have a problem with that. It'll be interesting to see if he gets to start from there. That's not where you want to be at all. It's a long way back on the grid, but let's see. I think they might roll them around again. Yeah, they will. Well, that does give me a chance. First and foremost, tell the guys how you get your sponsorship and tell us a little bit about your unique sponsor or your new unique foundation in terms of uh, watching diabetes. So a couple of years ago, uh, that's when I had the pleasure of meeting Brent and Lacey Cool from Drive for Diabetes Awareness. It was at a Legends car race at Charlotte Motor Speedway. And they were handing out these pamphlets raising awareness for diabetes. And this inst instantly struck a heartstring with me and my dad at the time, as my sister has type 1 diabetes. And uh, we, we didn't really do much then, back in 2019. But a as the years have progressed, and here we are now in Formula Regional, there was a, a massive opportunity for both of us to kind of work with each other, for me to spread awareness about diabetes, as I'm so passionate about doing so, and for them as well, because they're huge race fans at heart, and they have an all awesome setup here at the racetrack that they bring. They were at Noli as well, and they couldn't make it to Road America, but they have a great setup. So for anyone who's in the stands or around in the paddock, please stop by the trailer, talk to Lacey, talk to Brent, they'll talk your ear off. I am very familiar with rolling starts. That's what we did for a couple of years back in the Bandolero and Legend Car days. So I knew that when I had a, to do a rolling start earlier this morning, uh, I was very excited to do that. And we had a good start off of that. So uh, I think that this is going to be a, a pretty good opportunity to see some of these drivers adapt, as some of them may have never done a rolling start before. Yeah, just to repeat that, we'll have a rolling start here instead of the standing start, as you saw. Uh, car number 53 that's just gone through shot, that's Alan. 
uh, Isambard uh, had a problem on the start there, and now they've decided to keep them going because obviously the main reason for that, if, I, if I'm right, is probably the clutches. You don't want to mess with these clutches too much, and if you do too many standing starts, you can kind of burn out the clutch, right? That actually happened to me here last year uh, after the start. Uh, my clutch actually welded itself together after the first or second lap and we came in for a red flag and I could not come to a stop in the pit lane. We ended up DNFing in that race. So that was a, a very unfortunate uh, incident, but here we are. Uh, it looks like the cars are getting in their 2x2 two two lane in turn 11 and 12. I'm yeah, excited to see the start. Yeah, and that's going to be tough, though, for Lockie Hughes because he's got Noah Ping, who's a very experienced driver himself, and he will be on the race line. It's ironic that the pole position is on the inside, which is an advantage, but it is the dirty side of the track here at Mid-Ohio. And so Noah Ping will be thinking to himself, you know what, I've got a chance here to take the lead. Here we go, then, out of the carousel. Race three, Formula Four, America's from Mid-Ohio. Jason Alder and Jonathan Green bringing you the action here as well. Away we go, and it's a good start from the pole man, Lockie Hughes. Hughes on the inside, on the right-hand side for James, for uh, Howard Development, and he got a good start, but uh, here comes Noah Ping. But Ping hits the uh, dirt for a moment, so does the number two. And not a good start from Westling there, but he gathers it back together. Here comes Ping on the outside now. Neck and neck as they head into the keyhole. Great racing just with a nose ahead, just as Hughes. Now, can he make it? Who's going to make it to the turn four first, do you think, Jason? Oh, it's, it's looking pretty close. I think Noah Ping might have a wing out in front at the moment, but it's essentially a drag race to the finish. Here we go, then, down towards the famous turn four, and it is the pole man, Lockie Hughes, who's going to hold it into that turn four and take the... Oh, no! Oh! He's hit the grass, and that is disaster for the Australian. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I've heard a down under, but that was an up and over. What on earth happened? He just touched the grass. Simple mistake, but that's how easy you can go wrong in motor racing. I can't recall seeing any kind of contact between the uh, car of Noah Ping and Lockie Hughes, but I can't imagine that Lockie is very happy right now. Absolutely not. We'll, get, we'll see if we can have another look at that, and I want you, Jason, to uh, see what you see when we see it in slow-mo. Uh, but that is disaster right from the get-go, leading the race uh, in a great position to take this one out. And he's d just gone nowhere, and he's right at the back now. Bryson Morris picking up second place behind the VRD driver as they come through the carousel again. Looks like Noah Ping had a little bit of a wobble in turn 12 there. Let's see if Bryson Morris can capitalize on that and get a good run through turn one, maybe a pass in turn two, or maybe into turn four. I guess we'll have to see. Well, everybody else nice and clean through the field, but Lockie Hughes, the championship leader. And by the way, uh, the championship is very much on a knife edge at the moment because there's plenty of guys all chasing down and a lot of races still to come. I believe the championship finishes at uh, Cota uh, later in the year, am I right? I bet it's so, correct. Yeah. Let's take a look at it, Jason, because it was a strange incident because we don't often see accidents there. And really, whether he actually had a touch or not, we'll find out. Jason, take a look uh, at the incident just a moment ago. Side by side here, Ping on the right-hand side, but here comes your leader, Hughes. What happens? Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't see any contact no until him. after after uh, Lockie was already kind of in a spin there. Uh, I, I would say that the six just maybe carried in a little bit too hot, maybe a little thinking. too deep on the brakes. I think uh, he was anticipating Ping making the move, yep. so he braked later than perhaps he normally would and was a little bit hot on the exit of turn four and then just spun the car. It can be really tough to kind of tell where you can break, especially when the cars are cold at the beginning of the race. So here we are, Ping, Morris, and Sheehan. Sheehan has a good weekend so far, the uh, man from Texas. And he is in third, Flores fourth, Fla uh, Fonseca in fifth, Bennett, Christensen seventh, Berg, Brown, and Castro rounding out the top ten. First weekend here for Andre Castro, doing a really good job. He's being looked after by Al Anza Jr., who was here in the booth just an hour ago. Wow, look at this racing at the front as well. Everybody battling four positions. Look at this. Looks like Bryson Morris pulled out to make a move potentially in turn one, uh, but he looks like he backed out of it there. He's, look at this, the top five, six, seven, eight cars basically nose to tail. That just shows you how close these drivers are. Yeah, really good play and a nice move by Christensen on the inside. Hasn't quite made it stick on the 76 of Fonseca who closes the door and back down the straight they come. Can you get a draft and how close do you have to be? You, you can be within about three quarters of a second. That's where I've noticed it uh, kind of the most. But yes, these drivers are absolutely 
getting the effects of the draft. However, when the guy in front of you is also drafting on the car in front, then essentially negates your draft. And it looks like Bryson Morris also pulled out a move going into turn four, but couldn't quite pull it off. Yeah, it looks as though he's settled for second place. No shenanigans there. And he's now looking up the inside. This would be bold. Yeah, Bryson Morse is all over the rear wing of Noah Ping. But again, the car behind is right there on Bryson Morse. Ryan Sheehan is there to capitalize in case Bryson Morse puts a wheel out of line. Jason, what's the biggest thing you learn in F4? Uh, I would say that the biggest thing is the braking, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's so far different from anything that I'm familiar with, especially in karting where you tend to carry the brakes kind of into the corner. And these Formula 4 cars, you brake very hard initially, but then you bleed off the brakes as you approach uh -huh. those corners. It can be very good, tricky. Good to know. So, Carter's out there. If you're listening, that's what you need to learn. To learn. So, Noah Ping leading the way at the moment. And Morris in second place. Already a winner this weekend. Bryson man from Nashville, Tennessee, and Sheehan from Texas in third. So it's no change at the front, but if anything, the lead pair just slightly pulling ahead of Sheehan. But Morris really wants by quick, doesn't he? And again, another move by the 45. Christensen likes that move on the inside. He didn't get it done last time. Can he do it this time? Not quite. And again, these two going at it. Fonseca good at closing the door and getting the drive. Looks like Fonseca dipped two wheels off the exit there. I have a feeling that Christensen might be able to capitalize on that into turn four. Turn two is a very difficult place to pass as you have that long straightaway. After that, it's essentially a drag race to the apex of turn four. You're listening to Jason Alder. He'll be up in action in the FR Americas race in the 77. Where do you start? We're starting P4 on the outside. All right, looking forward to that. And there's Alex Berg, he's been doing some commentary as well, but the young Canadian, just uh, 15 years of age, uh, and had pole position for the second race, but it didn't all happen for him, unfortunately. He did well for the first two laps, and then he got into problems and had a suspension issue. And I don't know what it caused it, but uh, uh, it wasn't what he needed, that's for sure. I think Ryan also had an issue early on in that race yeah, as well. He's he got to be too. happy to be up in the podium spots right now. Well, the Crosslink boys have uh, fettled that car and got it all together. Mo, his engineer, I'm sure was working hard to get it right. And again, they come out of the carousel. Look in the mirrors from Ping, but he doesn't really need to look because he's going to get a face full of gray cars coming at him. 39 and 66. Flores, 22, is right there too, as is Bennett. Berg, up to six now, ahead of Fonseca. Christensen still eight. Ryan's looking to the inside of Bryson Morris here, thinks twice about it. Oh my goodness, this racing is so close. It looks like the biggest gap within the top 15 cars. It doesn't span over a second between any of those two. This is one of the closest races I've seen in, in recent times in a four. I was about to say, uh, that's another thing it teaches you, is, is how to ro race fast at close quarters and not be intimidated and know where your limits are, right? That can be very tricky, but yes, absolutely, especially when there's cars behind, there's cars in front. You don't know where some, ca some cars can Whoa. be at times. How about that for a oh move? Oh my goodness. That is textbook stuff. Nicely oh. done, a la Sato from a couple of years ago in Indy. But that is a move you can make at turn four. Use the camber, get up the inside, make a block pass, and the next is a left-hander. And if you can keep it hanged in there all the way around that left-hander and down that hill, you can take the lead. And that's exactly what Bryson Morris has done. Textbook racing. What a brilliant move, and what a good set of corners in the infield. It looks like he stretched a lead out, actually, and that is a rare thing to see so far in this race. So if I'm if I'm Noah Ping, I'm thinking about all I have to do to hit a couple of these corners right and make sure that the car behind can't get around me. Here's the move for the lead. Jason, you see what you just see. Wow, look at that. Uh, what, that uh, honestly, like you said, textbook move by Bryson Morris. He, you know that what? was a full she set on the outside. <laughs> yeah, he tried, he tried. He was there, but just wasn't quite enough. Well, unfortunately, Ryan Sheehan had a, a situation in race two where he did exactly the same thing, almost pulled it off, and then got beaten up effectively by the fact that he didn't pull it off at the end. And unfortunately, oh, a little bit of debris coming out of one of the cars there. I don't know what that was. Uh, but uh, it uh, knocked Sheehan out of the race to, uh, in race two and dropped him right, right back. There's Berg in the middle of that group. There's Andre Castro. He has not had the best of races so far, but I think it is incredible qualifying on pole in ah, your day course yellow weekend. Now, we've got a full course yellow, and I think we know the reason why. Let's find out, and we'll see it from the drone. And... Yep, there you go. <laughs> Excellent stuff. That's the advantage of having the drone. We don't miss a thing. Excellent stuff. Just in front of the carousel there. So that's out of our, that's just by our commentary booth or not far from, but that brings out a full course yellow. 
Uh, and everything settles down now. You catch your breath, I suppose, both mentally and physically. Yes, absolutely. It's very important when you have moments like this to, to take advantage of that and kind of just rest your hands a little bit, kick it, take a couple of deep breaths, keep your heart rate as low as possible, and just focus on keeping heat in the car for when we go green again. And physically, is there anything you can do to help your own physicality? Can you move about a bit or relax a little bit? Or are you, are you just there? There's our uh, Unser Junior. And is it his car? It could well be. Could, could it be Castro that's gone off, I wonder? Oh, that, actually, I think Andre Castro just drove by. But you know who I did not see? I did not see the green car of Fonseca. Ah, good point. Yes, and he's disappeared. Uh, you're right. Absolutely. Fonseca is the man. What a shame for him. He was having such a good race so far. Okay, but he has got going again, I'm glad to say. So he doesn't need to be uh, looked after by the um, trucks. But he will recover Fonseca in the 76, back to the back of the group. We'll see now. Now, what's going on here with one of the J. Howe development cars? He's got a lot of plastic hanging off the car there for a moment. I see that. It's it's a damage to the front wing with a lot of plastic. I wonder if he hit uh, one of the brake boards ah, somewhere. one of the boards. Yeah, good point. Well, there is Fonseca. And, yep, Fonseca has done a couple of seasons in F4. But, uh, yeah, that is not how he wanted to end his weekend. And and he got a good start as well. So Gabriel Fonseca from Sao Paulo, Brazil. We've had a few good drivers over the years from that part of the world. <laughs> he yes, says have. with tongue in cheek because there's been thousands of great drivers from that part of the world, especially in the junior categories over the years. But of course, we all remember the names of the likes of Ruben Barrichello and of course the Ayrton Senna. Now, let's have a look at what's happened to this car because there was some plastic hanging off the car. There's the broken wing. You see, you can see the side end plate on the right-hand side of that car number six. And how will that affect him? And that's Hughes we're talking about now. And there's that plastic. So, yeah, I think he's, he's picked up a hoarding as well as taking a bit off the front wing. So, Lockie Haw Haw Hughes there, the championship leader, in trouble. I think uh, if I were him, I'd be a little bit worried as if that falls off of the suspension, that's going to go right over top radiator. of either the, the radiator or the oil cooler, which would not be good. That actually could warrant coming in for a pit stop, assuming it moves out of that position. Well, he's down in 16th place, so there's not a lot to be gained. He can't gain that many places, I wouldn't have thought, uh, and especially with that damaged wing. And it won't take long to put a new wing on, um, but you risk that in a pit stop, and, well, we're under caution. Um, yeah, interesting. We'll see what happens here. And for Fonseca especially, this is mid-Ohio is notoriously difficult to pass at. I know in FR it's extremely difficult, but even when I was here in F4 last year, it was it was a tough place to, to pass at. Does that change your game plan a little bit, knowing that? Because, you know, if, it, if it's that much harder, do you, do you sometimes settle for just, you know, position rather than trying to be too aggressive and, and failing? I think it depends on kind of where you are on the racetrack. If you're in 22nd, then then yes, because essentially it, it would be very difficult to make it into a point scoring position. Uh, but if you're in the front, especially if you're a championship contender, I mean, those three points for that pass could be the difference between winning or losing the championship. So if it's in the coming stages of the race and there's an opportunity that kind of presents itself, you have to capitalize on that. Good point. So we're under caution here in our final F4 race of the weekend. Jason Alder joining me, Jonathan Green, as we take a look at these youngsters coming through. And we've had some great success over the years. Those that have gone on, Hunter Yaney, an F4 champion. He then went on to FR. He's now racing in FIA F3. And uh, obviously, we've got people like Kyle Kirkwood, a former champion in both F4 and uh, FR, and now winning, going on to IndyCar. So uh, do you keep an eye on those guys that have gone through the same ranks as you have and, and see how they're achieving and what they're doing and how they go about their business? Absolutely. I remember when I visited the racetrack for the first time back in 2020. It was at VIR, and I saw Linus Lundquist ah, yes. winning all three races. And now I see him doing the, pretty much the exact same thing in Indy Lights. I know I watched them all last year, but but absolutely, watching David Malukas and, and Kyle Kirkwood in IndyCar is, yeah. is nothing short of incredible, because I know that that me as, as long as, or excuse me, me as well as a lot of the drivers in this field could follow in those footsteps. Yeah, Bjarni Pedersen, another one. We've had some really good uh, Swedes and Danes uh, over the years. There's Hughes again, and he's staying out there for now. And... Uh, Let's see what happens in the restart of this one. The lights off on the safety car. Now, how far away from the safety car do you need to be to be able to see those lights, I wonder? That's a good question. You can see them from pretty far away, okay, cool. I would say. 
So everybody trying to get up to speed, get those tyres up to grip as they come through Thunder Valley. We'll get a restart here. Morris leading Ping, Sheehan third, Flores, Berg and Bennett. Watch for Berg in the 08. He's up to fifth already. Uh, he's disappointed after having pole position and not being able to capitalise on it. And so uh, Berg's definitely got the bit between his teeth. Bryson Morris, though, already a winner this weekend. So he knows what to do at the restart. But Ping is going to be all over him. I know Bryson Morris, if I were him right now, I'm thinking about the earliest point at which I can go full throttle without the cars behind being able to do the same. Right. And away he goes then. Yep, and he slings straightly to the inside to defend that position. Now back on the race line. That was a good restart, a smart restart too, because it really didn't give Ping any opportunity to dive bomb him. And uh, that opportunity may come, but again, Morris is wise to it. He's weaving from side to side, and that really is just tactical to make sure that Ping can't make a dive up the inside and leave it to the keyhole at least. A side-by-side -side action here as the number four of Brown goes side-by-side -side with Alex Berg. And Bennett, excuse me. Looks like Morris and Ping had very good restarts. The gap to Sheehan opened up quite a bit after that restart. Now, now Sheehan's under pressure now from the 22 of Flores. Arturo Flores. And here are the leaders, and just holding on Bryson Morris for now. But look at this, side by side again. Flores just getting through in the flexi sponsored number 22. Flores here is actually going to keep that position there. Alex Berg fancies his chances around the outside. Can't quite do it, the Canadian. What an incredible race for Arturo Flores. Uh, he might be on for his maiden F4 podium. Yes, that would be impressive. But boy, what's really impressing me right now is how close all of them are. Look at this group of five cars below us. Fantastic. There go the leaders. They've got a nice gap now. Oh, oh no. no! And another spin. Two car spin. Oh, no, that's Alex Berg. And that is Alex oh, Berg. In the wall. What a disaster. I feel for him, he's had a rotten weekend in many ways. And he, of course, was one of the championship contenders coming into Mid-Ohio. He's got the car going again, so no major damage. But I think the suspension is out of whack. Yeah, he's done, he's done, absolutely done. He manages oh, no. to grab back to the uh, pit lane, but that's not gonna help him at all. What a shame seeing that. Oh, he was having such a strong weekend, such a fast car, but just the, unfortunately, it just didn't go his Jason, way. Jason, take another look at it. Oh, that's so. Oh, that's a tough call. Yeah, it's weird how Berger, he just hit the grass on his own. He wasn't like he was affected by that. I think he was racing hard and maybe too hard, but there you can see how badly damaged that uh, suspension was. What a shame. I don't think I saw any kind of contact between uh, between any of the cars through through turn 11 there. So the fact that we saw two spinning, I wonder. If I wonder if something was on the racetrack. I wonder if the racetrack is a little bit dirty, perhaps, because I know yeah. in my FR race, there's there's a lot of dirt that gets spit up there. He's, a clean, right? He's not happy. You're good. You're good. Oh, well, that's racing, folks. And as you can see, Tony Garcia zooming right in on the action and showing us exactly what has gone wrong with that car. But Alex Berg is down and out, sadly. But back to the action. And it's fast and furious at the front as they come into... Uh, the carousel again, and absolutely nothing between the two leaders who pulled away from Sheehan in third place. He's got back up to third place, but he's got damage too. Oh, if it wasn't for bad luck, he wouldn't have any. I think that's definitely the nail in the coffin for his chances yeah. of winning this race. It looks like it's going to be a shootout between Morris and Ping with only five minutes to go. I think you're absolutely right. Five minutes less than to go, and it is going to be a battle for the podium, I'm sure, because uh, see, um, Ryan Sheehan is not going to be able to hold on without that wing down the back straight. Here they come to the keyhole. You'll see exactly what I mean. The leader's already on that back straight, and they're looking in their mirrors as Morris Ping coming at him. Very strong indeed, and he's going to try to take the lead here at the end of the straight. But let's watch third place as well because Ryan Sheehan has got a damaged wing and he can't hold the rest of the field off. Whoa, oh. big dive from Ping. Can't quite do it though, but he tried to intimidate Morris into a mistake. And they'll have a couple more laps to do this dogfight, which has gone on through the last few laps. And I wonder if Sheehan's still there in third place, I wonder. Two seconds behind. No. Yes, he's still there. Just. Well, yes. he's done a good job. He has done a great job trying to keep that car as fast as possible with that damaged front wing. It's going to be really interesting to see if Flores can get that third place position back from Ryan Sheehan to get his maiden podium. So here we go, the leader's coming through. Now take a look at the wing of third place, Ryan Sheehan. 
really struggling, but can Arturo Flores, well, he's got his own work to do because he's, he's being chased hard by the uh, rising stars racing car of Andre Castro in his first weekend of Formula 4. He usually does USF Junior racing, but Sheehan doing a good job because that car can't be easy to drive. It definitely cannot, and he's actually pulling away a little bit from Flores. I'm sure he has his mirrors full, but it looks like actually Matt Christensen is making a move potentially on the eight of Andre Castro into turn two. Yeah, they're side by side coming into the big machine Vodka spike coolers keyhole. Oh, no! Oh, no! And sadly, Castro goes off. And well, that battle was going to end in tears. He got hung out to dry on the outside, tried to keep his foot in, but that led to him going wide. And now he's lost several places, and that's just a real shame. Oh, what a bummer to see. Now, I would have thought that Al Unser will be on the, uh, on the radio. Oh, we're side by side for the lead. Oh, look at this. Fantastic racing. Bryson Morris and Noah Ping. But Noah Ping in the 65 has finally made it stick and takes the lead. But for how long? Will Ping hold it or will Morris come back? They're coming in to the Thunder Valley right now. And luckily for Morris, he hasn't lost too much, Grant. But that was a good overtake. It was a very good move by the 65 of Noah Ping to get that front position. It's going to be all in Bryson Morris now. There's only one or two laps to go. So Bryson Morris is going to have to capitalize and drive to his absolute limit. It'll be white flag next time round. And Xi'an doing a miraculous, a miraculous job here in third position. He's still holding off. Flores, Castro's gone off. Christensen's now coming at him. Uh, there's still plenty to come. Let's take another look. And here we go. What did uh, Castro do anything wrong? No, he just, he, oh, you, they touched. That's just a little bit of wrong. contact, yeah. yeah. It looks like Matt probably had a little bit of understeer on the exit of the corner and just had nowhere to go and unfortunately squeezed Andre off the road. That's Would a real bummer to see. Would the have anything to say about that? Uh, uh, potentially, yes. Uh, you, you really shouldn't be uh, doing something like that, especially when Andre was as far up as he was in that corner. I don't think he should have backed out there. I would say that Matt maybe should have backed off a little bit, given Andre a little bit more room. Um, oh, we have a spin. Whoa, another spin. And that's, that's Flores. Flores. Oh, what a bummer. So it goes from bad to worse for the Flexi sponsor number 22. And he's right in the middle of the track too, and that doesn't help. That's a scary place to be. It sure is. So Flores with those dirty tires as well, that could be a factor in this because he's gone off into the dirt there. Let's have a look at it, Jason. Here come the leaders. And then you'll see just behind. There we go. Yeah, all oh, on his own. Yeah. Yeah, typically when I see stuff like this, although there was no contact, typically that is made to avoid contact with the car on the outside. It looks like he went for a potential move on the car in front, but realized he didn't have enough, and in order to prevent contact, he just had to brake again, and that sent the car around. White flag is out on this one, so we've got one lap to go, and it's a cracking finish to this. At the moment, Noah Ping pulling away in the lead. Ryan Sheehan in third place, doing a really good job in the 66. And he is going to hold on to third place, which is going to be a great result. I know his dad well. He'll be delighted with that. Ryan in his second season of Formula 4. The man from Horseshoe Bay, just outside Austin, Texas. Went to a Formula 1 race a few years ago. Saw what he liked and said, I want to have a go at that. And here we are, just a couple of years later, and he's doing the real thing. He put some great sponsors together locally. They've worked really hard in the Austin area. I just happen to know that because I live in Austin. So I'm well aware of how hard Ryan Sheehan and his team are working to stay on this grid and stay in the hunt to be a professional racing driver. But Noah Ping is doing the business. And I would have said he's comfortable. He's got a, what, three-car length lead as he comes down into Thunder Valley. And Jason Alder, this has been a good performance. He chose his moment, chose it right, and he's taken advantage. Yeah, Noah Ping really did a perfect job there. There was a lot of pressure from behind. He had to make some moves in order to get to the front, and he did it and pulled away from Bryson Morris just enough so where he couldn't get in the draft to make a move into turn four on this last lap. But it looks like Noah Ping will be your race winner in race three. Brilliant stuff then. Noah Ping wins at Mid-Ohio, takes victory over Bryson Morris, who had led for some time. Ryan Sheehan takes third place with a damaged front wing and a miraculous job done. Christensen takes fourth place. 
Isambar takes fifth. Carrera, his best result of the weekend. The Argentinian taking sixth place. And Lockie Hughes recovers well despite the damage to his wing and takes seventh place ahead of Castro in eighth. Boland ninth, Brown in tenth. And that was a good, good race. Some good race craft, some good comebacks, and some good uh, racing under pressure as well. Definitely, there were a lot of good moves there. A lot of respect between these drivers. I really like how we only saw that one yellow that we had. That's very nice to see. You know, one thing that we didn't talk about was International Motorsport just had a fifth and sixth finish. Yeah. That might be their best result of the, in of terms the, of the yeah. double result of, of the year. That's, that's very good to see for them. That is very good. You're absolutely right. Good call. But good racing all the way through, and uh, especially by Noah Ping. Uh, VRD damage will be pleased with that. He, of course, the Englishman who runs the team. And VRD have put together an excellent run. They were the ones that run um, under Yaney, of course. And they've always had some very good drivers and some good development uh, within their ranks. Yes, indeed. Uh, I know I had a blast driving for them last year. Here we go. Side-by-side -side stuff. This is where Noah Ping took advantage. And he did it with style, too. Look, waited for the breaking point, had the inside line, heck, kept his foot in, and that's where he took the advantage by staying fast. And then he'll have the inside run. And that is excellent racing. That really is. That's not easy to do uh, when you're wheel-to-wheel -wheel like that. And, and that's a tricky part, that Minhar higher circuit, probably the hardest part of the track to go racing. Certainly. Going side-by-side -side through Madness is definitely tough, and Bryson Morris did a great job. Noah Ping did a great job, and it was side-by-side -side all the way from Turn 4 through Turn 5 into Turn 6, but Noah Ping just had, had just enough to stay out in front of Bryson Morris. Well, that should inspire you for a move at Turn 4. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, I've got Ryan coming in here to talk through your race, so that'll be fun to talk to because uh, he knows all about that, having tried it twice. Uh, it didn't come off in Race 2, but it did come off uh, for him in Race 3 because he's got a podium. Well, while we take a, a breath, let's take a look at some of the highlights from our F4 Race 3. And at the start, it was side-by-side -side action right from the get-go. And sadly, Lockie Hughes going off on his own at the exit of Turn 4, just a little too hot. Hits the grass, and that's where it all ended. Fonseca in a great battle. And the 45 also going very well. That's Matt Christensen. But he got tied at the front. Very tight indeed, as Bryson Morrison had the lead. Bryson Morris had a win already this weekend. And then two spins there going round. Berg involved in that one. Alex Berg. And then more battles going on. And that was Castro going off, but he was actually taken out a little bit by, Manis, uh, by Christensen. And then right at the end, Noah Ping taking the lead away. And... Once he got that lead, he never looked back, and that was brilliant stuff by him. He wins, Noah Ping. Let's head down to our man, Ben Sissel, who's going to talk to our winner, Ping. In fact, it's John Fippin, of course. The uh, series commentator and the man, of course, who looks after mid-Ohio as well. So let's head down to John Fippin, who's going to talk to our man, Noah Ping. Noah Ping getting a, a, a well-deserved sip of water and his hat. Noah Ping, what a exciting race it was. A great start. You took the lead early. Bryson got by you, and then you were able to pay him back at the closing stages. Yeah, definitely. It was a it was an up and down race. It was a bit crazy. I don't know what happened to Lockie there at the start, but I think he lost it. We made a little bit of contact when he spun back on the track, but uh, luckily the car was okay. And then, yeah, Bryson got by me. I think I was a little bit in my head because of the contact. But uh, it actually ended up getting like a little wet in the keyhole when I got the pass. So he, he ended up out breaking himself in the wet and I kind of like waited for the car and then got back to power and was able to pass him on the inside. Congratulations on your second win on the season. Thank you, appreciate it. Noah Ping, your winner, Jonathan. Great stuff, John. And yeah, nice words from the VRD racer. And yep, got in his head a little bit. And Jason, you know what that means. It basically got, he got him rattled, didn't he? He sure did, absolutely. It can be really difficult, especially when there's something like that. Seeing some, a car spin right in front of you can definitely you know, get in your mind, and uh, especially when there's pressure from behind, and now you're the new leader all of a sudden when you weren't thinking about making a move or something like that. It can be very difficult to focus on hitting your marks. 
Well, listen, Jason, I know you need to get back to your team and start preparing yourself for your race. I know there's about an hour to it, so I'll let you go and prepare. We'll be watching fourth on the grid, car number 77. You can't miss him. I've still got the hat at home you gave me from last year or two years ago, so I, I will treasure that and make, make sure I keep watching you for your socials. Hang on. Tell us, everybody, how to follow you. You can follow me at I am Jason Alder on pretty much every form of social media. So please head over there. We have awesome content. And please also go to Drive for Diabetes Awareness. Check out their setup there. And if you're on social media, check out Drive for Diabetes Awareness on Instagram and Facebook. Good words. And if you keep in touch, you might send you a hat. Thanks, Jason. Best of luck in your race three. We'll take a short break here from mid-Ohio. We'll be back with more action very soon. We're going to take a short break. Everything in our garage is inspired by our racing spirit. Racing for a great deal on the Honda CRV. Only at the Honda Dream Garage Spring Event. <laughs> 